for Tony Ford was growing short. The DNA results on Victor Belton's shirt were pending and appeared to be his last chance at avoiding execution. Convinced that Victor Belton himself held the answer to this puzzle, we were on a mission. Viva! Viva! Anybody know Victor Belton? No, no Victor Belton? No. Word was he was still living in El Paso. How about Victor Belton? No. All right, okay, don't worry about good. it. Right. I'll tell you, it's been a long day, man. That's the kind of place he'd be, a room yeah, outside. Yeah, well, I mean, we've been here for hours. How many hours can we be out here? You know what? We need more guys. Sam Streep's a local PI who'd done a lot of research on the case. Do you have any idea where Victor might be now? I believe Victor's in El Paso. I have a dossier on Victor that shows that uh, he was living in El Paso, Texas. How far is that now. from us right now? In fact, we're close. Um, you're within about eight miles. Thanks to Streep, we had a good idea where Victor might be. We were led to a house where Victor Belton Sr. lived, and we hoped that the guy we were looking for, Victor Jr., might still be there, too. Here? Is it here? You think? I don't know. Do you hear anything? Well, we come back later. But every time we showed up, we kept getting nothing. We knew that the house was for sale, so we tried calling the real estate agent. Was there someone living there? No, they're occupying just one room. The rest of the house is vacant. She claimed that someone was still there. Oh, you rocked it. Did he? Yes. How do you know? Right there. Oh, this wasn't yeah. there before. You're right. He's been here. Let's go right to the neighbors. You're next door neighbor, uh, you know him? The Beltons? Yeah, they moved. But according to the neighbors, the people in the house had moved out six months ago. That padlock wasn't on there when he came here earlier today. We tried the next best address we had, Victor's mother's house. Let's go, Rich. Let's check this out, man. Are you, Are you Victor Belton's mother? I haven't lived here since close to 13 years. 13 years? 13 years. <laughs> but that also turned out to be a bust. Then we chased down a lead that Victor might be working just across the border in Juarez, Mexico. It was an outside chance that he might be here, but... We cannot we, be down here and not look. No, I know. So we headed south of the border. Victor Belton? No, 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 no. Okay, gracias. I really can't think of this. This tip is not good. Maybe better off just going back. But everywhere we went, we felt that we were one step behind him. Back in El Paso, we showed his picture around town, but no one seemed to know where we could find the guy. Something's got to shake. Yeah, something. I mean, we're turning over a lot of rocks, man. We're going a lot of places. Make enough phone calls, something's got to come up. And to make matters worse, the weather turned nasty. This storm is unbelievable, huh? Right? If it snows now, it's going to be ice under it with this rain we're having. And they're talking about the temperature slowly supposed to go down. So well, this big, is going to be a mess. The big thing there will be there's no sewers. So all the water just puddles up. Yeah. That's well, no drainage. So we get. No, it's no drainage here. Because no, they don't have rain, probably. At this point, we felt our best lead was still the house of the father, Victor Belton Sr. You know what? Maybe we should leave a card here. Somebody, he's got to come around here once in a while. He'll probably mail. come and check his mail. Maybe he'll look at the card and give us a call. Finally, after over a week of searching, we got a bite. Hello? Where's Jerry Palace? Who's this? Victor Belton? Victor Belton Sr.? Hey, how are you? Very. I'm glad you called. So we took another ride down to that part of town. Okay, let's go, Rich. This time he let us in. Well, let me ask you something. Something is happening right now. I think you probably know about it. Mm -hmm. About Tony Ford is trying to get out of jail. He's trying to use Victor as being him. They've mistaken him for Victor. What do you think about that? Well, Victor was at home with me. 
Victor was home yeah, at your other house right. with you? That and my wife and daughter was there too. I see it as collusion, and I see, this is what I see. They wanted me and my two sons. They wanted us in jail or dead, one or the other. The police is lying about the whole game. What do you think about Tony Ford? I think Tony Ford was a victim. I don't think Tony Ford. I think he was set up by someone. I don't think Tony Ford did this. And they are using Tony Ford to say Victor did this. Because he said Victor looked like Victor looked like Tony Ford. That DNA is going to probably show who actually wore that jacket. I still don't believe Tony Ford killed those people. You, you don't believe Tony Ford? I don't believe Tony Ford killed those people. Well, mm -hmm. Victor's working now, right? He's mm -hmm. living, is he out of state? Yeah, he's out of state. Of he's Texas. out of state. Mm -hmm. What's Victor doing now? What's Vic, Victor Victor's doing now? A, well, Victor's a manager of a Victor store. I, I won't call the name of it, but he's a manager of a store. He's not he's here in... Uh, no, no, no. Hmm. There's, there's a guy we would love to speak to. We'd love to speak to Victor well, because of Tony Ford. You like the card you have that I left you? It, would you if, I would have really appreciated if you could call him and ask him to call us. I, I mean, that. Victor is out there. He's mm -hmm. in the court documents, mm -hmm. and Tony Ford's trying to say, Victor mm -hmm. did it. Mm -hmm. Victor did it. It wasn't me. And the closer yeah. this gets to this DNA thing, it's going to be in the papers again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think Victor's going to get arrested? Well, if they do, it'd be a big mistake. Because now the truth is going to get out if they do it. Over the years, Reggie and I had some strange meetings, but this one took the cake. The interesting thing is that when we asked him about Tony Ford, he, he says, says Tony he doesn't Ford, even have any involvement. He said Tony Ford's a grown man. I know, I know, incredible, incredible. But yet Tony Ford is Tony. implicating his son. Exactly, and he, I, I don't know if he won't accept that, he's in denial, or what that's about, but that's, that's, that's amazing. That, yeah. That's amazing. Well, I mean, the fact that a father, they're trying to get, Tony Ford is trying to get Victor Belton to take his place. But Jerry, I can't make a decision right now of whether Tony was the shooter. Or he wasn't. That's uh -huh. where I'm at with that. There's no doubt in my mind that he was there. But I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure in my mind right now, based on what we've done and what I've read, whether yeah. Tony was the shooter or not. Victor Sr. didn't want to tell us where his son was now living, but we got a lead that he was somewhere in Colorado. Did you get I called a friend of mine to check out Colorado, see if Victor Jr. might be living there, possibly under a different name. But we ended up with nothing. The only thing left for us to do was to wait for the DNA results. So Reggie and I headed back to New York. Eight weeks later, we got a call from Dick Burr, Tony Ford's attorney. The DNA had been tested and the results were in. Would it point to Victor? Or is Tony Ford behind bars where he belongs? Back in New York, Reggie and I waited for the DNA results. Finally, almost two months later, we got a call from Dick Burr, Tony Ford's attorney. The results were in. Uh, what we have right now is a distinct possibility that one of these blood stains is Armando Murillo's, since there were three different male blood stains on Victor's clothing. Uh, of course, if there's a female stain, then that goes up even higher because two of the people who bled that night were women. Let me understand. There's a few scenarios here. If it's any of the victim's blood and it's on Victor Belton's clothing, this is really going to help Tony Ford. Absolutely, because Tony told the police that Victor was the person in there doing the shooting and Tony wasn't even in there. And so if the victim's blood is on Victor Belton's clothing, that provides extraordinary corroboration of what Tony's story has been all along. Okay, that's the good scenario. And the bad scenario is if none of those blood match up to any of the victims, what happens then? Uh, then he is sort of in the same position that he's in right now, and he'll have an execution date set. Is, is, there, is a reprieve from the death, death row to life imprisonment, is that a win for Tony Ford? It's an absolute step in the better direction.
direction. No question about it. Um, it is still not what he deserves, which is a new trial. I like the possibility of that being a female, one of those bloods being a female, but I like that possibility. It sounded like it was more conclusively that it was three males. He says possibly a female, yeah. you're, but if you're That's right, what if I like about if that. If it is a female, well then... That's what I like about this. it. Tony Ford's chance of getting off death row seemed to have dramatically improved overnight. Hello, Jerry Pals. Yep. But a few days later, Marilyn Mungerson, the DA in Tony Ford's original trial, called to update this on the results. She just confirmed that none of the DNA on Victor Belton's clothes matched any of the victims. This meant it was unlikely that Victor had been the shooter, like Tony Ford's team had hoped. But just because Victor couldn't forensically be placed at the crime scene, there was still nothing definitive that could put the gun in Ford's hands either. With all the new information we'd compiled, Reggie and I decided to have another look at our interview in prison with Ford. I should not be here on death row. I never should have been here on death row. He's not saying he shouldn't be in prison. He knows he did something. He was there. He was in the car. He's, he's, accept, he's accepted yeah, he's that. He's accepted that, but he doesn't feel like he belongs on death row. It looks like he's really angry about that. He doesn't mind he's accepting the fact it. that he's in jail, but not death row. He, he doesn't want to accept that because he feels he didn't take any part in that. In your mind, what do you call that day? I don't like that. I know, I don't like that. It almost looks like he's looking for some kind of uh, answer or thinking of something. Yeah. There are things about this guy, I mean, that we agree with that looks like he's sincere. But he's more concentrated about himself than the Marillo family, what happened to them, I think. I'd like to see some more remorse on for part. the Marillo yeah. family. And I think that's, that's a big thing. I mean, you know what? I think you and I were cops long enough to realize that. Listen, the death penalty, am I for it? Not in all cases, but some cases I am. But something like this... If this guy really wasn't involved, wasn't a shooter, wasn't in that house, it's, sat out in the truck, you know what? I know Texas is tough. It's you not a gun. It's, it's 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 not conclusive enough to give the, to give anyone in this the uh, death penalty. Yeah. He could be the wrong man when it comes to this. Being on death row. Yeah. And I'm. You know what? In the beginning of this case, I didn't think I'd say that. Ford's defense attorney still wants to have his own expert fully examine the DNA results. And he says that in a few months, they'll use a new DNA test kit on other spots on the clothes that had originally been too deteriorated to give reliable results. But he admits that the new information isn't the key he had hoped would unlock Tony Ford's cell. I don't want to see anybody be executed if there's a chance that could have the wrong man. You know? You're right. We'll probably never know if Victor Belton had anything to do with the murder of Armando Murillo. As for Tony Ford, not even he denies being there that night as the driver who brought the shooter to the Murillo's home. And for that, he deserves to do hard time. But he always maintained that he wasn't the shooter and therefore doesn't deserve to die. And from everything we've learned, we agree. from Crime Stories next in a case for the Naval Criminal Investigation Service when a body is discovered in a lake on an elite naval base. And tomorrow at 9, the first in a new series on the Crime Investigation Network, I Survive tells true stories of incredible survival, including a close encounter with a psychotic hitchhiker.